Did you know that 90% of startups fail within the first few years? That's a staggering number, right? Now, here's the real question. How many of those entrepreneurs took the time to reflect on why they failed? How many of them asked for feedback? If you're like most, you probably view failure as an endpoint. But what if I told you that failure is actually where the real learning begins? There's five key points I want to make here. The first starting with feedback transforms setbacks into learning opportunities. I'll tell you a story about a time I thought I hit a dead end. I applied for a grant thinking I had everything in place, the perfect pitch, the right connections, the works, but then I was denied. It felt like a punch in the gut and my first instinct was to leave it at that. After all, rejection is rejection, right? But a friend of mine, a fellow entrepreneur, told me something that changed everything. Reach out and ask for feedback. Understand why you were denied. And so I did. That simple step seeking feedback turned what felt like a failure into one of the most valuable lessons. I learned exactly where my pitch fell short, refined my approach, and guess what? I received the grant the next time around. Feedback in the moment transformed my failure into a stepping stone. This is true for many businesses. Those that actively seek feedback improve their chances of success by 86%. Okay, let's move on to number two. Feedback provides clarity and direction. When you're in the thick of it, failure can feel overwhelming. It's easy to get stuck, unsure of what to do next. That's how I felt right after my grant was denied. Frustrated and confused, but the feedback I received, it gave me clarity. Suddenly, I had specific actionable steps I could take to strengthen my application and my overall business plan. Take Howard Schultz, the former CEO of Starbucks. As an example, before Starbucks became the coffee giant that we all know it to be today, Schultz faced a major setback. In the early stages of trying to raise funds to buy Starbucks, he was rejected 242 out of 242 times by investors he pitched to. He could have given up, but instead he sought feedback from each meeting, asking, what he could do differently or improve upon. It was this feedback that helped him refine his pitch, ultimately securing the funding he needed. This clarity didn't just strengthen his business plan, it laid the foundation for what would become a multi-billion dollar global brand. In fact, 72% of small business owners who seek feedback from peers or mentors after a failure report feeling more confident and prepared moving forward. It's proof that sometimes all you need is that outside perspective to regain direction and keep pushing forward. Creating feedback loop for continuous improvement is my third point. I learned about the power of creating a feedback loop from reading Eric Reese's book, The Lean Startup. Reese emphasizes the concept of build, measure, learn feedback loop, where you constantly build products, measure how they perform with real customers, and then learn from the results. This idea completely shifted my perspective on feedback. It's not something you seek only after you failed, but rather something you should do continuously, gathering and acting upon. Think of it like steering a ship. You don't wait until you're about to crash to make adjustments. You course correct with every shift in the wind. In fact, studies show that businesses that implement regular feedback systems are 33% more likely to succeed than those that don't. By adopting this build, measure, learn approach, I realized the most important thing is asking questions, gathering feedback, and refining my strategy at every stage, ensuring I'm always on the path to improve. My fourth point, building a support network through feedback. Another unexpected benefit of asking for feedback is you build connections. Take the recent wave of tech layoffs in the US, for example. Thousands of talented professionals found themselves suddenly without jobs, but many of them have taken this as an opportunity to connect with others, seek feedback, and pivot their careers. A notable case is the surge of former employees from major companies like Google, Meta, Amazon, forming support groups and communities on LinkedIn, Slack channels, where they openly share experiences provide feedback on resumes, interview techniques, and even collaborate on new startup ideas. One example is a group of laid off employees who created an online community called Techies in Transition, which now serves as a space where they exchange feedback on job searches, portfolio building, and entrepreneurship. Many of them have reported finding new roles, partnerships, and even starting successful ventures together. This demonstrates that seeking feedback not only helps you improve, but also expands your network in an unexpected and valuable way. In fact, 
80% of entrepreneurs say that mentors and peers who provide feedback played a critical role in their eventual success. By being open to feedback, you're not just gaining insights, you're expanding your circle of support and creating new opportunities for growth. And here's perhaps the most important point, feedback strengthens resilience. The ability to bounce back from setbacks and adapt is what sets successful leaders apart. Take Vice President Kamala Harris, for example. During her campaign for the Democratic presidential nomination in 2019, Harris faced significant criticism about her stance on criminal justice reform. Given her background as a former prosecutor, instead of dismissing this feedback, she took it seriously, actively engaged with critics, and used it as an opportunity to clarify and refine her position on criminal justice issues. By listening and adapting, she reshaped her message, aligning her platform with the evolving concerns of the public. This adaptability didn't just help her survive the criticism, it played a crucial role in preparing her to take on the vice president role, where she continues to champion criminal justice reform. It's a powerful example of how feedback, even if it's tough to hear, can be a catalyst for growth. In fact, 80% of businesses that actively incorporate feedback are more adaptable to market changes and customer needs. It's not just about surviving adversity, it's about thriving because of it. So the next time you fail, because it will happen, don't just walk away, seek feedback, reflect, adapt, because failure doesn't define you. It defines the idea or the execution, not you as a person. And with the right feedback, failure can be your greatest teacher on the road to success.